On the eve of the seventh day of Passover, I was going to go out with my family for just a day of enjoyment and pleasure, but instead I felt obligated, since here on the mountain that I live on, the Mount of Olives, there was going to be a funeral, I felt obligated that I should go and I should get to know where uh, people like Ben Yosef Livnat are actually buried. I just didn't feel that I could go have a great relaxation day and have fun if this uh, young Jewish hero uh, would be laid to rest uh, right on the mountain next door. I just didn't feel that it was right. So I, I joined the funeral procession. Um, it had left uh, the town of Alon More at 11 in the morning and about 1.30 in the afternoon they showed up in Jerusalem and one of the first people to show up was the aunt of this Ben Yosef Livnat and her name is Limor Livnat, she's the uh, uh, sports and culture minister of the state of Israel and she was there uh, mourning with the rest of us and what we were mourning was the story of uh, a young man who came in with 15 other Breslov Hasidim, that's ultra-Orthodox Hasidic branch Jews, uh, who came under gunfire from Palestinian Authority policemen as they left the tomb of Joseph. The tomb of Joseph is in the city of Shechem. Shechem is also known as Nablus, it's the Roman name Neopolis. In the year 2000, Israel handed over the control of this very special Jewish site, the Tomb of Joseph, to the Palestinian Authority, whereupon the complex was completely ransacked. The Israeli Defense Force subsequently refused to facilitate Israeli visits to the site, which gradually fell into disrepair and burning and just became a destroyed site for the Jewish people. However, pressure from Jewish groups led to infrequent visits which were allowed under army protection. Attempts to renovate the site were also uh, pushed because of these Jewish groups. Now one of these Jewish groups that made this return to the tomb of Joseph possible was actually the Hasidim of Breslov. Ben Yosef Lignat did not deserve to be murdered. He was a worshiper. He came to the town of Shechem to pray at the tomb of the forefathers, as many, many Jews do and have done for generations and generations. IDF investigations showed that Palestinian police knew full well that Ben Yosef Lignat was not a criminal or a terrorist. Five days after the killing of Ben Yosef Lignat, the Jewish response to the heinous murder took place. An annual ingathering of Jews to the tomb of Kalev ben Yifune and Yoshua ben Nun, Caleb the son of Jefune and Joshua the son of Nun, who are buried in an Arab village across from Ariel in Samaria. The IDF secured the event, but there was no trouble whatsoever. In fact, it was a joyous evening, and at the end, Israeli Knesset members said that this is our response, because we will never give up our right to pray at our righteous tombs and holy places, and we will never give up the land of Israel to those people who would take away our sovereignty. In the land my father's walked, I'm walking. Less than a week later, the, uh, the Jewish people, en masse, about a, a record 15,000 people visited the tomb of, of Joshua, the son of Nun, and Kalev, the son of Yefune, who are famous for being the two spies that the two out of twelve that stood up for the land of Israel, the other ten spies, they fell victim to fear and basically came, replied with a very negative report and said, no, we cannot enter the land.
Joshua is the famous conqueror of Jericho, who was the second in command for Moses and, and took over for Moses uh, in leading the Jewish people and leading them into the land of Israel. And he's buried together with Kalev ben Yifune here in the mountains of Ephraim, north uh, of Jerusalem, right across from the modern-day city of Ariel in an Arab village called the Kifl Charas. It's got two names, Timnat Charas or Kifl Charas. Now, what you're seeing uh, in these images are uh, actually the special night in which the same army that has uh, left the presence of the tomb of Joseph took over this uh, village and really the word is secured this Arab village uh, in which there may be uh, friends and there may be foes. Your name is Joshua. I am and here after Yoshua bin Nun and I am protecting this site for the Jewish people to come here and visit freely and enjoy and pray at the grave site of Yoshua bin Nun, the leader who took us into this land. The Israeli army, the IDF, allowed the uh, Jewish masses to come back and be able to pray in this Arab village in these uh, in these special tombs. These tombs are not being desecrated. They're being treated respectfully uh, by this Arab village. All right, folks, you are here with Yishai Fleischer, I on Zion, and we're at the tomb of Kalev ben Yifune, Caleb the son of Jefune. Who is this? This is a Jewish hero, uh, one that brought the Jewish people to its first experience back after slavery with the land of Israel. But not everybody was ready to accept it. A lot of people were still afraid. Kalev ben Yifune, together with his general, Joshua, the son of Nun, stood up strong against those who said, no, we can't take up the land of Israel. They said, yes, we can. And, well, after 40 years of uh, traveling the desert, Joshua and Kalev together led the Jewish people back into the land of Israel. We're here to remember them and remember their strength. And so we got a chance to, to pray there together for me uh, at my hero Kalev ben Yifunez and at to the Joshua the son of Nun. And also, actually, interestingly, the father of Joshua, Nun, is there as well. And this is the closest you can get to one of the most righteous people who was closest to Moses. And all we can ask for is his strength to lead the Jewish people in the next step forward towards sovereignty and strength and being a light unto the nations on our land. I'm talking in the land where my fathers walked, in the land where my fathers taught, yes. Minister Edelstein, why are you here today? In honor of you, should be known in the valid tradition. I'm glad that I'm not the only one. Thousands of people are here. Dr. Eldad, Knesset Member Eldad. How are you, sir? Is it funny that, uh, that the Israeli army has to kind of really go out of its way? It's quite time that the Israeli army will follow Joshua. <laughs> Yes, with member Danone. How are you, sir? Hi, how it's are you? It's good to see you. Welcome. Thank you. This is the first time I'm seeing you here. That's my first time here. <laughs> not the last time. No, definitely not. It's clear that Joseph's tomb, the tomb of Joshua bin Nun, are central pillars in Jewish culture and Jewish history. But while that may be a fact, another fact is that the Jewish people are barred from 100% access to these holy places. In fact, at some of the most major Jewish holy places, Jews aren't actually allowed to be there full time. The Tomb of the Patriarchs, the Temple Mount, and the Tomb of Joseph are all barred from full access to Jews. Now, Ben Yosef Livnat did not play by the rules, and he did not get a lot of world sympathy, that's for sure. But in his death, he made a powerful statement, and that is that Jews should have 100% access 
to their historical and cultural landmarks. To mark the 30 days after the murder of Ben Yosef Livnat, Israel's defense minister, Ehud Barak, has issued a call to have as many Knesset members as possible come to a daylight gathering at the tomb of Joseph. Does this signal Israel's interest in regaining sovereignty over the tomb of Joseph and other historical spots? Time will tell. Israel, 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 Israel,